Hi, I'm Brett. This is another video update on the turbo diesel range of modifications and servicing that we've developed over the last few years as a result of our moving into custom tuning the factory ECU. Originally with the Mitsubishi uh, 3.2 and then the 2.5 turbo diesel direct injection engines, then more so with our uh, rally program where our Forrester turbo diesel and also the uh, introduction of the Great Wall Turbo Diesel software tuning. What I want to talk about today is more information about how you can diagnose a bit more about your Mitsubishi Triton 3.2 and the newer model, the 2.5, and more specifically this ongoing EGR and soot control problem, which is a um, uh, build-up of the black gunk in the inlet manifold, which you can read about and hear about on our other videos. I won't go into a lot of detail, but I'm going to talk about is the map sensor locations, which is the pressure sensor for boost, which sends a very, very important signal to the factory ECU to control um, the engine performance. And what we've got here on our left is a, um, uh, an older model 3.2 turbo diesel Mitsubishi. You'll notice it's got the tray on the back. Now, typically these early model ones were detuned. Um, mechanically, very, very similar engine to the GLXR uh, four-door, uh, four-seater uh, model but Mitsubishi sold them with less power um, because they're typically used by tradesmen um, and it's an upsell for them to tell people to buy a more expensive model. Um, so we get a lot of these in with tradies who are looking for more grunt because towing around a lot of load, a lot of weight. Um, the later models, they did get more improvements in power and performance before they then went to the 2.5. So I'll get my cameraman to come a little bit closer because what I want to talk about is right down the back here, is the um, map sensor that um, on the early uh, on the models you'll notice it is after the exhaust gas recirculation valve, so therefore it can get contaminated with this black soot, which then blocks the um, fine uh, hose that goes up to the map sensor that measures the uh, inlet manifold pressure from the turbo. The later model of this particular 3.2 then moved the map sensor to the front side of the EGR valve, so there's less chance of that map sensor getting blocked. Um, the 3.2 litre engine was well known for EGR problems, so this particular car's got 150,000 kilometres on it with the original owner, and he's complaining about um, engine stalling, light throttle problems, um, excessive soot, smoke, lack of power. Um, when we have a look in the inside this inlet manifold, I'm, I'm not really looking forward to what we're gonna see because being the original owner, he tells me he's never had the inlet manifold off to clean, nor has he done any maintenance to keep the soot down, nor any other tuning modifications to stop it happening. Now, this particular car here is the uh, 2.5. Now, this is the Eleanor. I'll get my camera and come around the other side because it's easier to see. You'll notice on this one, the map sensor is on the inlet pipe here. The EGR valve is here. So all the soot is in this part of the inlet manifold. And this particular pipe here, which, if I carefully, I can't quite pull it off, but I, I know because we've had it off before, um, has been blocked and was causing all sorts of weird performance problems. Now, the later model of this 2.5 Mitsubishi have relocated this map sensor, pressure sensor uh, port to this little casting part on the inlet manifold here, which you'll notice is before the EGR valve. So if you look down inside this inlet manifold, this part here is actually quite clean, which means that pipe doesn't get blocked with any of that soot. So what I'm gonna do also is, is this particular car now also, um, we're pretty sure it's done a big end bearing. This one has done between 70 and 100,000 kilometers. It's got really bad soot in the inlet manifold. We think it's done a big end bearing because of the um, poor signal to the map sensor or um, some other reason that has caused it to not run properly. Um, we started cleaning the soot on it the other day um, and as the oil dilution got worse and worse, you could hear the noise in the um, engine, which was unusual for this type of engine. It's very, very hard to diagnose and um, listen for a big end bearing failure in a turbo or a diesel engine because of the noise that these engines exhibit. But when I start these two cars up, you'll hear the difference. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start up the older 3.2 to give you a bit of an idea of what it sounds like. Remember, this one only has light, light throttle problems. Um, so you can hear the, the engine typical diesel battle. You notice 
is not any unusual knocking noise. Now, a knock in a big end bearing is normally on an isolated noise. Because this car's had an oil change, it's got fresh oil in it, it probably won't be very easy for you to hear the difference between the two engines, but if you listen carefully um, physically here, not through the video, you can actually diagnose that this has got a faint noise and as the oil dilution gets worse and it gets watered down with diesel or contaminants, the noise just gets louder and louder and louder and the client who owns this car was totally unaware of it. So I don't want to scare you into thinking that you're going to blow your engine up or have big end bearing failures. It's not a common thing on these turbo diesel engines. But what is common is understanding the problem with the soot and the EGR with these inlet manifolds that then causes pressure signal problems with the MAP sensor. Why Mitsubishi are changing and modifying these engines as in any manufacturer around the world as these cars um, are um, developed over time. They find those little problems that they improve and that doesn't stop you from understanding more about how they work themselves. So hopefully this bit of information about diagnosing uh, big end bearing failure on your Mitsubishi turbo diesel and understanding the importance of the location of a map sensor from being blocked that then causes poor performance. It's not always necessary to go and chase more power. Often it's fixing the cars to make them run properly in the first place, then chasing more power, which we can regularly and quite easily deliver from a reliability point of view by custom tuning the factory ECU and particularly on this particular car here, if you've got a um, cab chassis 3.2 or 2.5 turbo diesel Mitsubishi, incredible improvement in performance. And of course, if you've got the, um, the four door non-cab chassis model, still a great improvement in performance. So that's it for today. On behalf of my team here in Sydney, Australia, I'm Brett Middleton. I hope this uh, info has helped you more. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram. Make some comments on this video channel. We'd love to hear back from you and um, click the link at the bottom and you'll see some more information that will take you to an album on our Facebook page. Um, until next time, thanks for watching.